as well as Advocate Dalim Ofu of the EFF. Prof, Advocate, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Good evening. Now, let me start with you, Prof. What does a Zimbabwe without Robert Mugabe look like? Can we even imagine it at this point, or is there still a lot of excitement and celebration? 37 years. So well more than half of the population, I'm sure, you know, were born after 1980. I can remember, I'm 62, <laughs> <laughs> and I went to Zimbabwe first in 1984 to do my PhD thesis. Um, so I can't imagine it with even without Robert Mugabe. It, it, it was the man and the state were these combined essences. Um, Sabello uh, and Glovo Gacchini has developed this concept of Mugabeism. Is there even an ideology? You, you, you read some of the writings of some of the journalists and, 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 and the uh, intellectuals. They speak that language, kind of a very academic, convoluted language. It's almost a, a discourse which is Mugabe, Mugabeism. Um, and now, well, it's been one man changed for another. How different is that man? Is there still a Mugabeist essence that you know, is traced all the way through Zimbabwe society. I think it can change. I think this moment is a moment of real change. Advocate, 37 years, I was speaking to my colleague Peter Ndoro earlier on, and he was saying that he lived through this. He, know, he has seen a young Mugabe. A lot of us haven't. I mean, we were born, I won't say when I was born, but <laughs> I mean, your take on what Zimbabwe will look like post Mugabe? Well, uh, you know, for people of my generation, it's unimaginable as Zimbabwe without uh, Robert Mugabe. Mm. Um, and I think that that's a very important thing. I even if whether Mugabe was a good leader or a bad leader or indifferent, just the mere idea of having one leader for 37 years means that the country is going to have to go through some fundamental changes and adjustments of style, of, of how things are done, you know, just the whole thing. So the new leadership has got a, a, a challenge in its hands. And um, I think that uh, insofar as this whole thing was really driven by ZANU-PF, whether it manifested in, in the politicians or the soldiers, but it was really in a, a party-driven exercise. Uh, the most important thing is that it has been a peaceful uh, transition. And um, I, I'm hoping that the new leadership, um, I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen. Are they going to call a new election? Are they going to do a government of national unity? Uh, what? Um, those are the options that I think the new leadership of ZANU-PF, which is the ruling party, uh, are going to have to ponder. But whatever the, the, the options that they take, it's, it's going to be something quite fundamentally different. Um, as David says, half of the population, if somebody was 10 years old in 1980, uh, today they are almost 50 years old. And they've never seen any other leader except for Robert Mugabe. And that puts it into so much context. Let's look at the politics of this entire thing, Prof. I mean, we mentioned now that the whole thing took place within and around the ZANU-PF itself. What does this mean for politics as a whole on the African continent? Because there are many leaders who continue to cling to power. Well, I think it was interesting because it was a coup that wasn't quite a coup. Um, the very neat. The, 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 very neat. Well, it actually became very complex at times. Mm -hmm. um, Chawenga, the guy who made his speech on uh, the last Monday night, said this is all internal. Um, we, we, we might step in. Then the next day, he's rebuffed by the Politburo. They say, no, that's treasonous. So then they have to go to Plan B, which is more of the real coup. One person was killed, an Israeli security guard for the Minister of Finance, Strombo. But look at Saturday. Look at the streets who were full of civil society activists, whites, blacks, women, men, young people, old people, poor people, rich people. And that, I think, was because I think, as uh, Tamuka was saying, there has been 15 years, almost 20 years of a democratic push that has pushed ZANU and pushed society as a whole into something much more democratic. So even with this expression that Munangagwa said today, he said, well, I can't go because it's not safe for me to go. He says, Mugabe, you better go because the people have spoken. 
and when the people spoke, speak, it's the same as God speaking. Now, that's more democratic than Grace Mugabe, who would yes. say, God has anointed Robert Mugabe, this idol, this, this mm. you know, one-man thing. So that even at that level, there's a little bit of a discourse of more democracy within ZANU-PF. And I think so many people in ZANU-PF have been living in, in this fear. You know, the CIO, the intelligence, uh, uh, nobody being able to speak up because you don't know if the person in the office next door is, is you know, a spy or not. And, and even that, the 2008 election, when so many people were killed after that runoff election in March, and then there had to be a presidential runoff after Shanghai actually won 47, right? At least officially. He actually won a lot more than that. So many stolen elections. But there were even ZANU people killed because some ZANU people voted ZANU in the parliamentary election. Remember, there were many elections going on at the same time. So in the parliamentary election, some people would vote for a ZANU PF candidate but vote for Shanghai as a president. It was known. And those people were singled out. And tortured or beaten up or, or, or killed. So these, these very subtle political, this, this, this fear that was pervasive throughout society will go, it'll have to go, and the military can't put a handle on it. As a matter of fact, they were getting worried even as of yesterday. They, they, they sent out this document telling the students, don't, don't go on strike, don't have a fees must fall sort of thing, <laughs> uh, study. And so they were worried that civil society would, would move faster than they could so that might have been part of the reason why there was a settlement. Now, who knows why this settlement came about, but we'll find that out in the next few days. I want to stay with what the prof mentioned about the people having spoken. Now, why did it take them so long? Is it simply a case of fear? Yeah, it certainly fear played a, a big role. I mean, you can't just have a population that, uh, you know, a few months ago was swearing by Mugabe all transformed within a, a matter of a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people who, I mean, well, when the EFF, for example, called for Mugabe to step down in February this year, there was a fellow called uh, Psychology something who, uh, I mean, I don't think there's a single insult that he didn't hell at us. <laughs> yeah. So where is he now? I'm sure he's also celebrating. So, you know, one must, must not be naive about this. Yeah. Um, and it's important that uh, it is an internal party thing uh, because, you know, if, if we get ahead of ourselves and think this is all Uhuru and liberation and so on, we might be shocked by, by what is happening because these are people who really have been uh, Mugabe supporters. Uh, the question uh, that you asked earlier about what it means for the continent, I think it's very significant mm. because in a way this is a, a generational thing. The generation of the so-called liberators and the strong men and so on in the tradition of uh, Nyerere, Nkrumah, Mugabe, okay. Michelle and so on. This was probably the last person who represented that generation of, of liberators. So it might well be that uh, the real change here is that young people of Africa are now going to be taking over. Obviously, um, the, the, the current leadership of ZANU-PF, which is in, already in its 60s and 70s already, uh, is probably going to be, to be the, the midwives of a re, the real transition. But uh, across the whole continent, I think there's a, a much bigger change that's going to come in the next 10 or so years of a new generation of leadership, a more, you know, a, a more agency and a deliberateness in, in, in bringing more radical type of, of, of changes. Because the, this generation that brought so-called political freedom has done its part, and we, we now probably are going to be moving to the next phase. So this is also significant for that reason. Now, our reporters have been on the ground for most of the day. Some are in Zimbabwe. Some here in Johannesburg, actually, are mm. speaking to people on the ground. Zimbabwe mm. National saying, we are hopeful. You know, we are hopeful of a better tomorrow. Yeah. Today is a new day. Yeah. It's a better day. Yeah. What happens beyond the celebrations? Because like with anything else in life, the excitement and, and, and the celebratory mood mm. will wear off. Yeah. Um, but people want to see now tangible things, real results. Mm. You know, let's speak about the economy. Let's speak about socioeconomic issues that the people of Zimbabwe have faced for many, many years. Prof, you can take this one first. Mm. Sure. Although I'd like to stick in uh, on the political question for one more minute. Generation 40. That was a new generation. Well, you know, 45, 50. 
Jonathan Moyle, the famous uh, information minister who was squashing all in. And that was squashed. They made it. They, they, they really tried. They pushed too far too fast, and that's why Monagago came back and the military came in. Mm. I would have more faith in the generation slightly under that. We, ha we have, we have, that makes sense. Yeah, sort of 10 diabetes generation, yeah. that, that age group. The students like, like Tomuka who was, they were, they were hurt very badly Absolutely. when they were demonstrating against NPF and, and worked very hard for the MDC. Now they're a little skeptical of the politics of, you know, elite pacting, let's put it that way. Anyway, okay, what should happen within the next this is something that international capital, or put it, you know, the World Bank, the IMF, the British, Munangago is seen as a favorite of the British, very conservative economist. They were worried about another nosedive with these bond notes and these treasury bills and this electronic money, which was, so they were worried about a hyperinflationary spiral happening like it happened in 2008. So I think um, there were various parties around the world who were keen to see Mugabe go, and keen to implement the sort of policies that Patrick Chinamasa, the finance minister, last but one, who was going to the Lima meetings of the IMF and trying to strike deals, uh, but they wouldn't trust Mugabe. In fact, Mugabe would, would dismiss any liberal economic formulations that some of these technocrats were trying to bring about. So that could happen in a big push. And of course, the, you know, the shock therapy that Naomi Klein talks about when there's a crisis, mm -hmm. the uh, guardians of global capital come in and say, okay, you better fix it up right now where there's a honeymoon. And I want us to come back to that in a moment. But now we're going to cross to our reporter, Sipo Stearman, who is in Pretoria, and he's standing outside the Zimbabwean embassy where we saw some celebrations earlier. I bet there's still more celebrations to go. Sipo? Well, a very good evening to you once more and our viewers at home. We are still outside uh, here in the streets of Sunnyside in Pretoria. Well, Sunnyside is often called uh, the Hillbrow of Pretoria and uh, this is where we find a variety of foreign nationals who come from their various countries across the continent who live here and of course uh, part of that community includes the Zimbabwean nationals who have gathered here to celebrate the news of uh, former President Robert Mugabe's res resignation and if I can just step out of the shot here, you can see that uh, they are still uh, gathering out here and some of them are saying they are going to be here till midnight and that they are not going away anytime soon. Um, the police of course are keeping a close eye on events. Uh, it did uh, get a bit uh, tense earlier on and I suppose it's because um, the Zimbabwean nationals they are very excited. Many of them said that they never thought they would see uh, the removal or the resignation of uh, former President Robert Mugabe uh, in their lifetime. So this is a moment they call it's a, a freedom day for them. They say they attained uh, 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 independence from the colonial government but now this is um, freedom for their nation and this cause this will lead then uh, to hopefully economic recovery with many of them saying that they are tired of living in South Africa making a uh, small uh, money or earning rather small salaries and being called by all sorts of derogatory names they're saying that their country has so much potential and that they hope that the new incoming leadership will help revive the economy of uh, Zimbabwe but what we are also getting out here from the Zimbabwe nationals that I've spoken to I was earlier on uh, outside the Zimbabwe embassy where I spoke to a a couple of young people they're saying that um as much as they are happy with the resignation of uh, Robert Mugabe, they still uh, do not despise the man. Well, some of them say that. They say he is still a national hero, but however, he has overstayed uh, his welcome. So you get a sense that there is a bit of forgiveness uh, towards Mugabe that is coming through for some of the people spoken to, saying that he still is a national hero who overstayed his uh, welcome in power, and now it's time for a new beginning. So um, that is um, the views we are getting on the ground. We will, of course, uh, continue to cover the reactions here uh, tomorrow for you but uh, for, for, from, from, from us here in Pretoria right now it's back to you in studio. Celebrations taking place in Pretoria but I can tell you right around the world 
and uh, America, London, you name it, everyone is celebrating uh, the departure of uh, Robert Mugabe, 37 years in power and he never thought he would see this day coming. A few weeks ago he was saying he was going to continue to serve the party because the people loved him, he said. Well, it seems that has uh, changed somewhat. But that's it from me. Uh, you're in safe hands with the tablet. She's going to be taking you through the rest of this evening. But uh, I've, uh, uh, it's been interesting observing this historic day when uh, President Robert Mugabe resigned from office.